Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Vanilla OS. And Vanilla OS is a Linux distribution that is immutable. And an immutable system is something where you can't really write to the actual kernel and change the system binaries that are running for the actual base system. But you can change applications and so on. So how does that work? Well, the main system is immutable and then you have additions to it that you put into containers so you can run them in bottles or you can run them in a virtual box or any kind of dockerized container anything like that and you containerize all your applications run them in containers but the actual system binaries can't be changed or can't be updated so that makes the system less brittle and more safe for certain applications so let's switch over to my cam here and i'm going to start installing so let's see here here we have vanilla os and it's just the drive here let's install vanilla os here then i will try push it up into a big view so let's click on install and then we want to change the language here we can change to a bunch of different languages but we will use english there isn't anything below here and then we have the keyboard layout and in my case, it's easier for me to just choose Swedish keyboard guy layout. And then we have the region. It doesn't really suggest a region. So you have to set it your own. And I'm closest to Stockholm, Sweden. So let's do that. And here we have my drive, SDA. And uh, I can select here to configure this. And then you can have the entire disk or you can do a manual partitioning if you do want I chose just the entire disk one thing here is that the minimum requirement for this kind of installation is one CPU that is 64 uh, bits and you need to have at least 100 gigabytes of drive space and you need to have 8 gigabytes or 4 to 8 gigabytes of memory so four is minimal and eight is is recommended. And uh, so if we go over here, we say that we do, will do this on the full drive. Let's confirm those changes. Then I need to add some data here. So I add my name, username, and then we will enter the password. We need to enter the password twice. And then we can go on to the next screen here. Here we can see that we have a language, ENUS, Keyboard SE, Stockholm, disk, and the user. So this is the full installation here. Let's see if we can continue. So now it is installing. And you could also get uh, it to show the actual install process and everything it does. So there is a view for that. Um, sadly, the screen is a little bit cramped at the moment. Um, but installing this should be just fine. Uh, I've tried this a bunch of times. I had some issues earlier where it didn't really like the settings for my graphical uh, settings. So this mode works for the installation and also running the system. But if I had another uh, driver for my uh, uh, monitor, then I would not be able to see anything when I install it. It just was blank screen. Hopefully for most of the common GPUs out there like uh, AMD and Nvidia, it should just work fine with the drivers that are in the installation. I haven't tried it on an Intel GPU, so I don't know about that. It might not work at all. Uh, your miles may wear vary there, but if you want to try it out and you have an internet GPU, please do and give me an information back about that. Uh, the installation process will take a while. So I will actually stop here and then we will get back to it when it's all installed and ready to as a ready system. And we are back. So let's see here. Well, let's log in. Type in my password here. 
So when you start the vanilla OS for the first time, as with any other operating system, you will be required to do some installation process. So you will get this uh, get started guide here. So let's click into that. Let's start. And we want the color scheme. I will choose the black one. Dark is always great. Then you can choose if you want to have flag pack or app image. They will do a change later on where they will switch from using um, Ubuntu as a, the base for their uh, distribution to Debian. That will be pretty soon. So these options might change quite radically. Um, the next question here is what will be the core applications that we want? Well, do we want the core ones? Do we want Office of course? Do we want common utilities like bottles and sound recorder? Let's take everything here. And then time shift. So install time shift and create snapshots of your system. Always great to have that feature. Uh, open VM tools with boxes. So let's install that for virtual machines. Restricted codecs for fonts and uh, audio and media codecs of, uh, and so on. Let's install all of, the, all of those. And then we have app port, reporting system that helps us improve. Let's do that. Always want to help a developer in need. And then we want to uh, enter the password again uh, for it to do more intrusive, intrusive things. And now it's actually installing. And this process will take a while. Uh, and as I said with the, the other installation, you have this little button down here that looks like uh, a small square with um, some dots in the bottom and that is show console output. So if we click on that we can follow the process of installing the firmwares, installing all the packages and everything. But this will take a significant time so if you don't want to see all this of course and I will get back to you when the system is fully installed and set up with everything that we uh, have done in this initial installation here. And we are back and now we're gonna look at a little bit what's in this installation. So this is a standard Ubuntu pretty much, but we have a couple of differences here. First off, we have the web, which is just a browser called the web. It's using WebKit, but other than that, no real similarities to any other browser. Um, so, a little bit different, uh, but good. It's a decent web browser. Then we have Photos, a normal photo application. If you import your photos and work with your photos in the library here, we have files and we have software. So here we can install more software if we want anything, uh, if we want something to play with, for instance, we can have a bunch of different uh, things in their store and so on. So there, there is a bunch of things that you can install here. Um, Minecraft, PI edition for instance. And of course, if we want even more games, if we look here, we should have Lutris, Heroic, and uh, you could of course install some games with bottles as well. That's a different way of containerize uh, software from Windows and so on. We of course have the app image launcher, we have contacts, weather, clock, maps, extensions, music and video. Things that you usually uh, want to have in an operating system. These kind of standard apps that is always there. Calculator, time shift for backup, uh, really nice. You set up a time shift to an, uh, another site where you push your backups to. And then it will do that regularly, similar to Mac OS. Um, and then you have the control center and settings. So you have a bunch of settings here where you can set up how the actual system should look for updates and which subsystems should be here. And here you see that you have a bunch of subsystems that are similar. So Fedora and Alpine and so on, you can run as subsystems in this Linguist installation. Um, system monitor boxes so this is 
another way of virtualizing things. There is a lot of package managers or different virtualizations options. Calendar, of course, in the utils we have fonts and disk usage, connections and so on. Document viewer. So a bunch of things that you usually just use directly uh, from the different apps, but you can find them there as well. A text editor, and then we have the full LibreOffice suite. That was something that I installed. And then we have Sheez, which is an application to take photos. So it's not that much in the default installation, but you can install more applications. And I also added this guest edition CD because I wanted to add all the drivers that are in a virtual box, for instance. So if I now go into files, for instance, here, and then go into my drive here and find the executables for Linux, and then I can run that, run as a program, it will probably tell me that I need to be system, uh, have system administrator. So if we open it a prompt then, so we will open a command prompt and then go to slash media, wooden, and that, that drive, we have the similar file here. So we couldn't run it like this because then we need it to be root. So if I do sudo and enter the real sudo password, it's trying to install this, so it's removing the old additions and so on. And it's copying models and see, you can see that it fails here on a bunch of things and says that I can't really access these directories. I'm not allowed as root to write to these directories. And that is by design. This software, the, this system is immutable. You should not be able to just push any old things into it. So installing drivers from another vendor is not allowed. Uh, so we can't really get the best, best drivers here, but the most drivers that you need will be uh, added to the vanilla OS. So you should have drivers for your system, but that could be an issue because you can't change the kernel, you can't change anything in the system. So it is pretty safe. And when you actually upgrade, you say, I want to upgrade, it installs all the upgrades and then switches over to the new OS when you reboot. So it changed the whole package and everything else is containerized. So as long as the containerization works, all your applications should still work as usual. It should be no difference. The only thing you change is the whole operating system. So if you upgrade a Linux environment and you're on the bleeding edge that I am, then I could have problems where different drivers that match and match and doesn't work. But in this case, I don't have that issue because we upgrade the whole system and everything is tested on their end to be a safe upgrade and then we don't really mind any applications because no applications will break as long as they run in the same containerized environment. So that's a really good benefit for this. And what, who could actually use this system or who, uh, who is this system for? Well, I'm more of a developer. I need access to the system and want to do changes on the fly, add extra libraries, run special drivers and so on. So I'm not the right use case. Uh, if we take somebody that might be less technically inclined, I think of my father and uh, mother that are more like they use that computer. They are really good at using different tools and uh, using word uh, processors and so on. They have a bunch of applications that they like to use and so on, but they are not really into the nitty gritty and really wants to work with that kind of stuff. They just want to get their stuff done. They want to play some games. They want to write a document and so on. Then this system I think could be a really good option because if they will need to do an upgrade, they do the upgrade and they can feel safe that it just doesn't blow up on them and doesn't work anymore. Everything should just work. It should be a safe environment. 
and if you are um, somebody on the go and you really need to have this presentation work um, all the time but you still want to upgrade your system you are more of a let's say business person and not really a, a developer then i think this system could be a really good choice as well it's very similar to windows or mac os but it's linux so I think it's a really good implementation and something that a lot of people could have usage for. Is it a good uh, implementation for a server system? I don't think so. Maybe in the future if they want to have similar things for, but with Kubernetes. But then again, there is a bunch of these kind of solutions for servers anyway, so you don't really need them. <laughs> That's the use case. So this is desktop environment, that is more safe, that can't really change your system. So if you get a virus, for instance, it can't really go into and hooking onto the kernel because it doesn't have access. You don't have access, so they don't have access. So um, yeah, it's an interesting uh, solution and I think it could be really beneficial for a lot of people. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I read them all. And I really hope to see you in the next video.